Welcome to Redbeard and the Den of Tools. Howdy ho, guys and gals, it's Red, your friendly neighborhood tool bear, back again here in the Den of Tools. And today, we got something fun and exciting for you. Yep, we're here today to talk about Diamondbacks. Oh, okay, wrong slide. <laughs> That's not the right Diamondback. We're talking about the Diamondback tile saws, the new ones from Harbor Freight. Yeah, a few months back, they uh, released the, quietly, I should say, the uh, the Diamondback uh, tile saw blades uh, all on their own. And it raised a, a, a small buzz amongst the uh, the Harbor Freak community as to, <laughs> what are these blades for? Because, you know, there's the whole new brand and there's only a couple blades for them. Maybe there's going to be more. And sure enough, we got it here in-house. This is the 10-inch. There's also a 7-inch, but we got the 10-inch here to, to show you today. And we're gonna put this thing through its rigors. We gotta, we gotta set this thing up. I got the help of my uh, trusty Labrador here in setting this thing up, and in no time flat, we got it up and ready to go. This thing is a beast. I gotta say, I, I was thoroughly impressed with this thing. I will admit, I've only used the smaller, uh, like bench top tile saws in the past, and boy, have I been missing out. This thing is so much fun to work with. Now, to put it through its paces properly, I decided to try an array of different materials. And that is uh, ceramic, marble, stone, rock, a combination mosaic with glass and metal tiles in it, as well as some brick and some other materials. Now, let's see what this thing can do, shall we? Okay, some quick setup tips. These are the sleeves that the bolts that will hold the saw arm and such will mount on it says in the manual that you need to insert them three of mine were already in there one was floating around then you're going to have six bolts that go through here and bolt into this section of of the saw arm there's four that are short two that are longer you're going to want the short ones for going into this section and of course you know humans being human my human here didn't pay attention to that so we've got too long, too short. So, you know, he was able to figure this out, muddle through it, and uh, we got it straight. So, there you go. So, so you want the, the four short ones for this section and the two longer ones for the right angle bracket that's right there you can see right in front of us. And the, the tools for mounting all this stuff uh, come attached to the saw arm itself. So, they're always there. You can see them right there. It was a really easy setup on this. These are this is the right angle bracket where you're gonna want the longer screws or bolts. There we go. That's a pretty good looking saw there, if I do say so. Now, there should be an additional eight bolts. Uh, these are where the wheels are going to mount. You'll have to unscrew them and then put the mounting bracket on it. Also there, if you notice, in the upper left is my, my new symbol I'm going to use for those of you who uh, use headphones. This part isn't that loud, but it will get louder later. Uh, I've been trying to vary the sound levels, and people complain that it's too soft. Some people complain it's too loud. I'll just warn you now when something loud is coming up. So anyway, here's where you, you mount the uh, the two brackets for the wheels. You're going to want to use an extension, or I guess you could use the tool that came with it, but this makes it a little bit easier. Uh, you want to make sure that they're pointing inward. This uh, keeps you from uh, catching the, the spindle there on, on something as you drag it past. Remember, it's a universal truth that after attaching a wheel, you have to spin it. it it's a law. I'm not sure if it's a federal or if it's a state thing, but, you know... We, we got to obey the law, right? And this seemed like a good opportunity to actually uh, bolt the saw to the stand. There's just two bolts, one at either end. Uh, the frame is threaded, so the bolt just goes up and into the frame. It's pretty uh once you get everything locked in it's pretty tight now this is the splash guard on the back through the magic of editing one two three there we go 
So that's the rear splash guard. Then there's going to be another one that wraps around from the outside. There's two uh, screws on this. One there and one on the other side. There's also a small tab right where you can see uh, his index finger there. And you just bring it down here and you just, there's a little slot, you just pop it up into place there. There he goes. Alright, and then this just wraps around the back behind the, the previous uh, guard or flap that was installed. Now you can see the view. It's a little odd looking. I guess that's the right way it goes on there. Now for installing the table, you just line it up there, lower it down, it should slide right onto the tracks. Come on, right on there. He can do it. There we go. Now right there you can see there's a little knob right in front there. If you twist that, it locks the table from coming off. There's also a knob on the right that locks the table in place, right there. And now it's time to add in the splash trays. But first, let's put it on the side table. This is the aluminum uh, side table here. It's got two little nubs right there that line up with these points. And then with that uh, knob there in the center, you just loosen that up first, pop it down, make sure those line up, and it just snaps into place. Tighten it up, and it's pretty steady there. Now the first splash tray you're going to put on is the long thin one. It goes all the way at the end. There's just a couple slots down there it pops into. You fold that tray up, and that catches all the, the back spray off the saw. The next one is a little bit trickier, and that's this one that goes on the side under that table. You got to kind of cantilever it in and then uh, give a little bit of the you know what there. There we go. Get it on. Now, in this third tray, it just pops in two tabs here, folds down, and then there's a locking tab. You can't see it's out of frame on the right. You got to lock into the other, the other tray there. Drain plug goes towards the front. So this goes down right there. This comes. It would be nice if this thing would. Does this turn? There we go. Don't worry, folks. We never let him out of the house unattended. But he can figure this out eventually. Come on, little guy. You can do it. There we go. Then the cord from the pump just goes along up here, plugs in this dongle, pull that boot down. Make sure the cord here and the plastic tube don't interfere with the, the movement on the tray. What? Why? Why can't we do this on the miter saws? Huh? Arbor, inner arbor. This is going to be the part that jets the water onto it. And we've got Z Diamondback. First edition vinyl. I just want to add that yes, the wrench that comes with it can be used for this unless of course one of your cubs runs off with it and you can't find it. Then it's just a simple fact of filling up the uh, tray there to between the two fill lines. And then it's time to test to see if we've got a real working saw. We got water. Let's see if we got power. <laughs> and for a bit of full disclosure real quick as you can see there that big gap yeah after he filled the uh, tray there 
he didn't push it back in. So all the water you see on the ground is because there was a three inch gap there. And here's a quick demo of the LED light and the laser. You see the laser is very bright. The LED, it could be brighter.
And now for the real test of uh, durability here. I left the saw out overnight, set up as you saw it. That is a picture of the Red Rock Mountains uh, about two miles from my house. That's snow down to an elevation about 100 feet higher than what I'm at right now. It didn't quite get to freezing last night, but it was in the mid-30s. Let's see how the saw handled. First thing in the morning, no warm-up, just plugged in. Let's see if it can cut. That looks like a factory cut edge. All right, there you go. That's it. That's the Diamondback 10 inch heavy duty tile saw. I'll let his performance speak for itself, but I will say I, I was pretty impressed with it. Uh, the, uh, you know, and, and having said that, you know, I, I've only really got a lot of experience with the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The bench top tile saws, the, the much smaller ones. And after using those, moving up to something like this, this thing was a dream to work with. Uh, it's got 24 inch rip cut capacity, eight inch, uh, sorry, 18 inch diagonal cut, three and a half inch max cut depth, uh, and uh, one and a half inch max cut depth at a 45 uh, degree bevel. It does come with that 10 inch blade. Uh, comes as, you know, it's in the box. Boy, I gotta say, putting that blade on was so easy. I wish more like, you know, miter saws and chop saws were that easy to work on. Uh, we got the uh, 2.4 horsepower mo uh, motor, uh, laser guide, and LED light. I will say this, I thought the LED light was uh, a tad bit anemic, but if you're just trying to see where the cut's happening, I guess it would work for that. Uh, the laser was nice. I, I really appreciate having the laser on there. We got the bevel head. I didn't show that off as much as I should have, but it, that's all built in there. Uh, the heavy-duty adjustable rip fence. Yeah, that thing's built like a tank. Plunge cut capacity, uh, capability. Yep. Uh, rugged aluminum table. I, I'll say I, I felt it was pretty well put together. I think it's, it's hefty without being you know, too terribly heavy. And the built-in wheels means that, you know, if you do have to lug it into a, a work site by yourself, you can just drag it along like a suitcase. Uh, oversized splash table. Yep. Uh, sealed ball bearing slides. The slides that seem buttery smooth. Uh, the industrial pump and the onboard tool storage, which we talked about. But let's talk about the important stuff. And, that, and you're, I know the first thing you're asking is, yeah, but Bear, how much does it cost? Well, we got uh, $429.99 is the list price on it, but there's already a coupon out taking that down to $389.99. That's a pretty nice price for a 10-inch uh, tile and brick saw like this, a, a wet saw. Uh, I got to say, the, the, the everything about this thing felt like it was top-notch quality. The bed especially, boy, I really felt confident in using this thing. As you can see, I had you know a couple hundred dollars worth of camera equipment on there as well going under that saw blade, and I felt confident it wasn't going to move around. That was, I was, it was a pretty sturdy bed. Uh, as I said, it does come with the blade, which is a $40 value. Now, I looked into other pricings on similar size blades, and I would say that's fairly close. About the cheapest you're going to find for a not completely piece of trash uh, 10 inch blade is going to be $30, but most of them are in the $40 to $50 range. So if you, you consider that's thrown in there, that's a nice little value. Now, the one thing it doesn't come with that most saws in this class do is a stand. Now, Harbor Freight sells this decent little stand here for $57.99. There's nothing special about it. it. It's a sturdy little stand. I know lots of people in the Harbor Freight community have modded the stand for other uses. I've seen somebody who, who used it 
to, to mount a lathe to. So this thing is fairly sturdy, okay? There's no doubt about that. And and once I got it all set up, I got to say, I, I never had any questions about whether this thing was going to stay put and uh, and be there you know, to hold the saw you know, steadily for what I needed to do. Uh, just the fact that it's not included, I don't know. I don't see a lot of people using this saw in a bench top configuration. Maybe you're out there, but I just don't see it happening that much. And as I said, most of the other saws, they come with a stand. Per se, the, the saw that they compare it against in, in their ad is the DeWalt uh, 10-inch saw here. Uh, this is listed as having a 1.5 horsepower mo uh, motor, but it, it's definitely one of the better tile saws out there. And the price kind of shows it, $850. But it does come with that deluxe folding <laughs> TV tray style stand. Now, the one saw I would want to compare this against, I know that a lot of you are going to pop up with, is the Cobalt 10-inch saw. In fact, it's obvious if you look close to this thing, they, they share some DNA. It's not a complete match, but they're they're definitely kissing cousins there. I know that uh, Harbor Freight probably doesn't like it when I compare it against stuff other than what the, you know they're, they're saying it, it is. But, you know, the reality is, guys, you know, you're going to see it. You're going to know what this thing is. And I know there's a lot of you out there who are big Cobalt fans. You know, I am as well. Uh, but this is, this without a doubt, uh, you know, a better price point comparison. But you're still, you're looking at $500. Now, that comes with that stand. So you're like, well, Bear, that's pretty close there, right? Well, hold your horses. If you think about it, we're looking at this saw here at 429. You know, the 389, that's a nice little coupon, but let's hold off. Let's say four, $430. We add in this stand here for another $58. Oh, and guess what? If you look at any of the super coupons out there, guess what's not on there? The brand names Diamondback and Chicago Electric. Yep, that's right. These are super coupon capable. That means together you're going to be looking at around $350 for both of these. Yeah, a industrial strength 10-inch tile saw with stand for $350. That makes it less than half the cost of the DeWalt and a tidy savings over the Cobalt. Oh, and if that's still a little bit too spendy for you, they do make the seven inch here. It's uh, 250. Cur uh, current coupon takes it down to 240. If you've got some lighter duty jobs to do, maybe that's the way you want to go with it. But anyway, there you go. What do you guys and gals think? I gotta say, <laughs> I had a lot of fun using it. There wasn't anything that I, could, you know, threw at this thing that it had a problem with. It chewed through all of it. I'm I'm sitting here thinking, well, what what else can I cut with it? <laughs> the Cubs were like, can we, can we cut the dinner plates? <laughs> <laughs> my daughter dropped one of the uh, uh, was a full size uh, dinner plate on her toe the other day really really smarted her and she wanted to sacrifice that plate to it I, I said maybe later after school sweetie <laughs> anyway that's all the bear has for you today uh, you know what do you think about this or do you do any tile work you thinking about doing any tile work why don't you put your comments down below let me know what you guys think. Also, don't forget, I'm looking for your submissions here to help me with my sign-off. Take a video of yourself or your friends or your dog or your cat doing the Bears signature sign-off, and we're going to get you all, we'll get the faces of, of the Den members up here. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Take care, everyone. And as always, say it with me, shine on.